Hello and welcome to this simple tutorial on the Atomos Atom X Cast. Uh, this is a really cool product um, that will extend the life of your Atomos Ninja V. Uh, I think it's a brilliant product. And I'll just be going through a basic tutorial. Um, I don't believe there's really any manual yet. Um, so we're just going to go through a simple setup, a very basic streaming setup using uh, my three cameras and the tablet, actually my iPad Air 4, all connected to the back of the Atom X cast via through the HDMI port. I'll be using my Zcam E2S6 as one of the camera. My second camera will be the Canon ATD. Uh, my other camera will be my GoPro Hero 3 Plus, my trusty old GoPro Hero 3 Plus. Uh, I'm also be using an iPad Air 4 because um, I'm currently using my Canon 60D to record this, but I will talk about that um, a little later on that. So I will be using the iPad Air 4. All devices will be connected by it through the HDMI port at the back of the Atom X cast. Please note, this is very unscripted. So any, any uh, vocal errors or mistakes on my part, please ignore or forgive me. So here we go. My main primary camera, the first camera I should say, is my Zcam E2S6 cinema camera. And I will be connecting via the HDMI port to the Atom X HDMI port 1. My second camera is, will be my Canon 80D and that is connected by an HDMI as well to the HDMI port number 2 on the Atom X cast as you can see. Uh, the third camera, but I'm not using a camera because I'm using my Canon 60D currently to film this, so I'll be using my iPad Air 4 to connect to port 3. I'll be using a USB to HDMI adapter cable. And last but not least, it's my trusty old GoPro Hero 3 Plus, and that will be connected by its micro HDMI going into the Atom X Cast HDMI port 4 using the USB C going into my MacBook Pro 16, and I will be using uh, OBS. Uh, to demonstrate this setup. So as you can see, everything is connected and working perfectly. All four devices are up and running. Uh, camera one, screen one, is the Zcam. As you can see, I will be moving my hand. Camera two is the Canon. So. I'm showing you my hands in front of the Canon, and there you go, um, screen two. Screen three, of course, is the iPad Air 4. Um, so as you can see, and screen four is the GoPro. There you go, um, moving my hand in front of the GoPro. And all four, connected, all four connections are, are working fine by HMI. Now, if you notice, it's not coming through. Now, I've, I already set up the beginning of the OBS. Now, for those who are familiar with OBS, you know how it works. I'm not going to go through in detail, but I'm just going to show you that I use a video capture device. And once I go to the video capture device, I already set it up, but I'll just kind of run through it just for, you know, clarity. Um, but when you select, video capture device right um, and then you go into the settings uh, I choose um, there you go you'll see the Atom X cast is detected which is really really cool and but if you notice nothing is happening um, when I say it's not coming through OBS now it took me a while to realize this <laughs> because I was trying to figure why is it not coming through. Uh, let me see if I can get a clearer picture. Let me see if I can just adjust the exposure so you can see. I had to touch on the live icon. I didn't realize it. I didn't. I just thought it was there for, <laughs> for display. But once you touch the live 
uh, icon on the cast boom there you go it is now broadcasting live to OBS by the USB-C uh, basically turning the AtomX cast into a, a sort of a, a web a web camera so to speak uh, and there you go we have camera one we have sc sorry screen one screen two screen three screen four um, we have the function keys F1 which would be picture in picture uh, we have F2 which is basically audio F3 is in your um, in, in these and then F4 which is your um, switcher all right uh, when I select each um, numeric keypad I, I like to call this the soft switching because you now when it's turned green um, there's a red highlight around the camera that is live but when I press another uh, camera number two you'll see a green border which is almost like a soft switch which basically it's saying that you know that's the next uh, picture that I want to go to or the next camera or the next um, inputs that I want to go to so it's highlighted as green so you see a, I don't know if you can see it properly but there's a green highlight around the image on the screen as well as a green uh, light on the keypad and when you press it that turns red and that now becomes live and that becomes the program being broadcast to OBS again if I press the other one uh, camera number three which is the iPad it's green and you'll get green uh, needle but once I press it again it becomes red and it goes live and you can see it on OBS and same thing if I press number four there's a green needle around it and if I press it again it becomes red and I can actually go to that screen so uh, it's a nice uh, I call it a soft selection or soft switcher but if I press the F4 again it's red that's like a hard switch so basically whatever numeric camera I choose is instant if I press 1 camera 1 is selected press 4 camera 4 is selected if I press 1 2 3 4 camera 1 2 3 4 is selected as I am pressing it it is being reflected on OBS screen which is really really cool I would just quickly run through the F1, F2, F3, F4 which is uh, picture in picture, uh, the audio, overlays and switcher respectively. Um, not gonna go too much into details just a quick run through. Uh, so F1 which is basically picture in picture so I can actually have the main primary camera which is camera 1 being live but if you press camera number two it, it highlights yellow on the keypad as you notice and that is basically going to be the camera if you can see it clearly on OBS camera two which is the Canon is actually inputted if I press it again it comes on press it on comes back on again if I press three the iPad is the new camera and camera and if I press four I have to touch the iPad it was going to sleep if I press four number four number four is the uh, GoPro and you can see it's a camera in camera picture and it is highlighted yellow now my only minor criticism is that when I selected on the keypad the color changes but for some reason it doesn't reflect on the actual um, Ninja V um, so maybe that is something that maybe Atomos can address the same way when you're in switcher and I press any of the camera options one two three four there's also a, 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 a sort of color see if I press um, camera one it's live it's red but if I press any option there is a red board if you can see it it's very slight but if I press number two camera two depth there's a red border that comes around it so in addition to the light on the numeric pads I press number three you should see a, you know, it 
it's reflected also on the screen on the Atomos Ninja V in the switcher mode, all right? And same way if I select uh, a soft switch mode, there you go, um, and I press, I press number one, which is red, you see a red slide board if you see it. Uh, if I press number two as a soft switch, it's a green outline around it. But that's not the same in picture in picture mode. Whichever selection I make, it's not reflected on the Ninja V. Um, it's, a, it's a minor thing because trust me, the, the, the color and the light on the keypad is very bright. Um, it's really nice, really illuminated. Um, so it's a minor nitpick, but um, I, I think that's something that probably can be fixed in a firmware update by Atomos. Audio is pretty cool. Um, same principle. The audio is focused on whichever camera you select. So if so, right now if I press F1, it will select the audio mic from my camera one. If I press number two, and I go to camera number two, which is the camera right now, the audio will take priority will switch to camera two as well. So camera one, the audio will switch to camera one. Camera two, the audio will switch to camera two. Um, there is another feature also within it, which is like a, I think it's like a follow mode. So with a follow mode, I can select the camera. So right now camera one is taking the audio. But if I press uh, the same button again, it turns blue and what it's doing is it's, it's gone into follow mode so if I go back into um, my switcher if I go back into my switcher which, yeah, F4 whichever camera I choose the audio automatically um, goes with that camera basically follows whichever selection I make and that's basically what it's doing. If you look a little closer you'll see an F next to the mic, the image of the mic. So it's following whichever camera I select, it's gonna select that audio automatically. If it was um, by default you select camera one, camera two, whichever camera you choose, the audio will stay on that camera no matter which camera I select. So once you press it again, it's back to red. That means the audio will default and stay on that camera, no matter which camera I select. But I can still manually change it within this audio ear if I want. The third one uh, we have is basically overlays. I'm not gonna go too much into the overlays, um, but it's basically self-explanatory. And there you have it. I'm going to demonstrate now the same setup, but instead of using the USB-C, we will be using an HDMI connection from the HDMI out of the Atom X to the MacBook. Okay, so I have connected an HDMI cable to the program out or the HDMI out port on the Atom X cast. And that will be going into my MacBook Pro. If you have a laptop that has an HDMI port already, then you're good to go. But for people who, like myself, who have a MacBook Pro that only has USB-C ports, in this case, I'm gonna be using an, an, an HDMI capture card, which will take my HDMI cable from the Atom X and basically translate it to a USB. And this approach, this setup, basically is going to be using HDMI. And as you can see, it works. Same thing. Um, of course, all feed, all camera feeds are coming in to the Atom X cast. Camera one, two, three, four. Or should I say camera one, camera two, iPad three, and camera four. Uh, the only difference or the only change is when you go into OBS you're not going to see the Atom X cast option. You're going to see a USB camera because again, remember, you're going through the USB-C. So you select the USB camera because that's what you have. Same thing I have to do, press live to trigger uh, the live feed coming into OBS so that you can broadcast. Um, 
to YouTube, to Facebook, to whichever platform that you're using. Um, but it works the same way, it works exactly the same way. So, however, I know a lot of people are going to be asking what about the HDMI from the side of the Atmos Ninja rather than the back. So, of course, we have those two options you have the USB C out and the HDMI out. But let's demonstrate now using the HDMI cable coming from the side of the Atomos Ninja V instead. Here we are. So I've connected my HDMI cable from the HDMI out port on the Atomos Ninja V itself rather than the Atom X cast. All connections are still live coming in from all the different devices into the back by HDMI. But instead of using the, the USB-C out and the program um, HDMI out from the cast, we're using the HDMI from the side of the Atom Most Ninja V. Uh, the only difference is that I don't have to click the live button. Something you should note though, I mean like if you go into the switcher, you know, it's a different menu system like as, once, once you update the firmware and you have picture in picture, you have uh, Overlays, you have all the ports. See, it's showing you the cast port and the USB port, but it also has the Ninja V port, um, and you can use it for different modes monitor, multi view modes as well. You can add another external monitor, larger monitor. Um, frame, it has a frame rate. You'll see the primary and connection, your, your video mode, your frame rates. You're introduced into a screen of choice in terms of whether the Atom. X cast or regular HDMI, if you click that, it takes you back to your regular Ninja V recorder. Um, if you have the SDI, but I don't have the SDI adapter, so that's not triggering. And you just press Atom X cast, and you can choose whichever mode you now want your Ninja V to operate in, which is super cool. Now, this takes me back to something that I want to bring up. The, my Canon 60D refuses to work on this. And no matter what I do, the Canon 60D cannot work with the Atom X cars. But the minute I put my 60D, it refuses to work. Now if I take my 60D using the capture card direct, it's fine, it works. But for some reason I cannot get the 60D to connect to the Atom X cast when I plug it in. Um, maybe that can be addressed in a firmware update or if that is the issue and maybe that's something that Atomos could look at. I don't, I'm not too sure for older cameras but clearly I have no problem with the ATD, no problem with my Z cam, no problem with the tablet but the, but the 60D is just won't connect no matter what I do. It's just not recognizing uh, the output from the HMI port but it does recognize it via capture card going into my MacBook it looks fine uh, so there you go um, this is a, a quick overview first impression demonstration no fancy YouTube stuff like those youtubers this is a raw basic simple demonstration for those who are trying to get an idea of how to operate this there's no manual yet um, I suspect but this is a quick duty <laughs> demonstration for anyone who just needs a little walkthrough or guidance. So I hope you enjoy and thank you for listening and watching.